call them. The uh, meeting to order first thing is approval minutes April 18th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 18th. Second. The only correction I had was in the correction. Because <laughs> I, I think what we said in the end was that we were going to lease the property, purchase the property, or license the property. License. For well, the scenarios of licensing or purchase or none of it or neither of them. No, but there's leasing also. You could lease, purchase, or license. But somebody said lease is not really a lease. Because when I said, because when I said or neither, he, Gordon said, no, no, that's called. Uh, yeah, he said it's not license. A, yeah, which means it's not called a lease; it's called a license. Is there such a thing as a leasing of that property? Yeah, we could. So you do. got leasing yeah. or licensing? Lease, sale, purchase, license, lease. And lease yeah. Put That's what my, my neither became the, the license. <laughs> I don't the neither was you didn't have to buy a license. So, yeah. I suppose okay. there's neither too, so there's four things. <laughs> four things. <laughs> so no, they both. Well. <laughs> okay, I'll do the approving minutes. Aye. 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 Uh, additions to the agenda look very short. Last Thursday, it's since gotten more than busy. So I've got five things, uh, senior van update, uh, Cornwall Village petition, tax refund, Marie Baum scholarship, <coughs> donations to the West Cornwall Septic Study, and actually there's a six uh, executive session of the Ben project. Okay, so for a quick review. Yeah, because I got five. I got five. <laughs> Senior, Senior Band, Band Cornwall Village, Village, tax refund, and oh, tax refund. And which one? I missed one. Then no, no. there's uh, a donation. Oh, donation. Donation to West Cornwall. So, is that a motion? I'll second that if that was a motion to add those. Or, yeah. Yes. Any discussion? Any other addi additions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Communications? Uh, we've got three puppies from the American Legion. From Memorial Day. Yeah, they don't donate. <laughs> right, so they gave us the puppies anyway. Uh, so, I thought we, they've done this for years, and it's a nice program. It's a local legion. Uh, so I thought maybe we could make a motion to donate 25 bucks to the puppy program. Um, where, this is uh, the, uh, the American Legion Auxiliary Lamps and O'Donnell Unit 46 out of Goshen, but it actually covers Cornwall also. What fund are you going to take it out of the? Uh, town celebration. We have a fund that we do Memorial Day out of, mm -hmm. and that may make it go over slightly, but I think it's on the anniversary of World War One, and um, why not support the Legion? Okay? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. <coughs> uh, any other communications? Any public comments? Um, you had something about the highway crew. The job. Oh, we did have something. We did. We got a letter. Oh, right. I sent a letter from Mr. Bridgman, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Bridgman, thanking them. Uh, for doing such a great job on resurfacing Dark Entry Road. He said it looks so good, it's almost a shame to drive on it. I like that. So that's good. I think he probably has driven up and driven on it. So anyway, I will invite him back and thank him for his. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, any other public comment communications? Mm -hmm. Uh, 
first on the agenda is town meeting uh, coming up. It's the annual budget meeting on uh, May 19th, Friday night, 7.30 at the school. It has two items, the budget and transferring $10,000 capital product reval to capital transfer station buildings. <coughs> I'll make a motion that we sign the notice for the annual town budget meeting of those two items. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, um, next is uh, Town Bridge Program. Uh, we have, I think, at least four things to talk about with that. Welcome, Roger Kane, mm -hmm. for the wetlands meeting. Quick. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's dry? Well, it's a little too dry in some mm -hmm. respects. Uh, but, uh, everything is under control. Good. So, I thought we'd talk about four things. One, Flat Rocks Road Bridge Project. Uh, also, we got a request, request from Town Norrell for supplemental payment for the Valley Road Bridge. And then Roger had some thoughts on the Smith Place Bridge. And I met with HVA about their <coughs> report on a town stream crossing inventory. So, if it's all right with everybody, let's just uh, start with the Flat Rocks Road Bridge. How are we doing with that? Good. I talked to um, the um, vendor today, and uh, they uh, everything is progressing. They're working on it. They will have the uh, the shop drawings to us by the fifteenth of May. Um, of May. Right. That's good. If, if That's we good. can review them and get them back, we were talking about hypotheticals. Yeah. So if we can get them back by the thirtieth with uh, all the necessary approvals, uh, they will then. Uh, start fabrication. Their fabrication team will let us know periodically how things are developing, but their target date would be the 1st of August that they'd be able to deliver um, the material. That's so good. That's, that's very good. That's, uh, that's two, the, two months. Better than the 1st of December. Right. So that uh, we could then notify uh, Town and Rail they could start prior to that because right. there's uh, quite a bit of prep work. Uh, mm -hmm. but this is actually delivering the material. Right, if, right. if we're confident that we're going to <clears throat> receive it on time, this is going to be fabricated over in um, uh, Hudson Valley. I think it's in Kingston, New York. It's where the fabrication shop is. And uh, uh, I might take a ride over there and see it in progress just to reassure myself that it is really going to be here on such and such a time. I have a great deal of confidence with the uh, contact as far as their ability to deliver once they make a commitment. So, uh, okay, that seems to be progressing quite well. They, they said they, they may have the actual shop drawings to us um, early part of next week, but definitely by the 15th. And then no. we take those drawings in consultation with um, the engineer. Kurt. Cardinal right. and make sure that Cardinal doesn't find anything uh, objectionable. Uh, I mean, this is what Contact does uh, virtually, you know, every month of the year they're right, producing right. these things, so they're going to use the Some current standards. Right. If somebody picks up, uh, there's a difference in the elevation here and there, uh, it ha has to do with the the size and the spacing of the reinforcing, the which is all, I mean, it's really a cookie cutter. You tell them the length and the width of the bridge, and they go into their computer, and the computer just prints it out. So we'll send it, that's going to be sent to us electronically. We'll forward it to um, Cardinal, as for Cardinal's concurrence on it, that it meets you know, what they expect. And uh, sometimes you might find something that skews 
six degrees on the plan and it's four degrees in the field, something like that. It's just a matter of correcting the um, dimension. So that's uh, where we are on okay. flat rock. So we're, our next meeting is on the 16th. So if we get them on the 15th, it's unlikely the Cardinal will, is it likely or unlikely the Cardinal will have them reviewed by the next day? Unlikely. Unlikely. So, unless, I mean, unless there's a problem, we'll just keep on going. I mean, we, we don't have to approve them right. because we're not engineers. And as long as our engineers said they're, they're, everything's lined up with our engineers' expectations, <coughs> then we're, we'll just keep on going because we've already authorized it. We've, we've authorized the work. The purchase room. Right. Okay, so that's good. At the far end, so so there's, at, at the far end, so the Mitchell, so we put it in process, it's going to be an August 1st delivery date, tentatively. Mm -hmm. Time all starts two weeks ahead of time? Yeah. What, what approximately? Yeah, mid-July. Mm -hmm. um, and then we zero in on the exact delivery date uh, as everybody just working their way through it. If they have to hold it in the feet in, in the in their yard and uh, and say Hudson, but uh, uh, Kingston. Kingston, then they could keep them there for several days while. Yeah, right. But um, typically, they want to get it all uh, produced and ready for loading. Then they hire a trucking company, and the trucking company brings the parts in a specific sequence. Right. right. And the contractor has to be ready to. Um, unload the trucks and put them in place. You, you wouldn't want the, the parapets delivered before the footings. Um, you know, that has to be a sequence to it. Even like down on Valley Road, it all worked out. The, the only truck that was off was the very first truck. He came with a part that we couldn't use until we put a lot of the other parts in. So he had to sit there for the better part of the day uh, in the cabin of his truck and, and wait, wait his turn. Anything else? Okay, so that sounds encouraging. Uh, next item, we uh, got a, a uh, request for Town of Rel to pay an additional $22,000 for work that was done on the Valley Road Bridge. Um, we put this off until we knew that we had some money in the uh, Bridge account, which we recovered some money for the insurance on the uh, Music Mountain Bridge. So currently there's $10,859 in the bridge account. Uh, they requested money for to remove the ledge uh, for the footings uh, that were designed. Uh, for unstable soil, not for ledge, so they had to make some accommodation on the site. That's half, about half the request. Then there was the uh, footbridge and uh, additional pumps that were necessary to dewater the site because it was the site was wet because we did the work in November instead of September when it was dry. And the last was light towers, extended hours. Um, because we pushed them to get the thing done ASAP. So I talked to Kyle um, a couple weeks ago. said we had $10,000 in the uh, account approximately and um, I said he could have the footbridge back. He wanted the footbridge just down at the uh, gravel pit. Um, well, we always knew there was going to be a footbridge, so why was that a surprise to him? Did we not tell him that he was going to have to put it in? I think that came that came in after his original quote, seventy thousand dollar quote. I mean, I can have. But well, that's the way we had um, thought we'd be able to rent the uh, pedestrian bridge that we used down on Lower River Road. Yeah. That that was built specifically to be a, a pedestrian bridge. Yeah. And. Uh, Mohawk Northeast, uh, took, they built it, and uh, that was part of their project, uh, but they retained ownership of it. So they took it back and uh, 
we expected to be able to rent that uh, temporarily, but uh, it turned out. But we could not. Well, right. They, we, they said they'd be delighted to rent it to us. Uh, they had to find it. When they found it, they found that somebody had cut some of the steel out of it, so it was no longer usable. So then we went to uh, Town of Morell and asked them, you know, could they build a pedestrian bridge? And they said, yes, they could, okay. and they would. Uh, in commenting on, on their bill, there are things that I don't totally concur with and a lot of things that I do concur with. Um, they did have to take out significantly more rock than they expected because of the design we had. We had requested the design to be for a soft soil. Uh, it wasn't. It was all rock. We, we saw an outcropping of rock before the job began, and they thought they could easily pull that rock out of their excavator. Well, they couldn't. They had to use a hammer and get an extra large machine in there. The extra large machine was also for moving the the individual segments. So they so, saw that that rock was there, and they made the decision that they could use their excavator, and in the end it was... It was much more than anticipated. Right. We had expected to be about five yards of rock. They probably took out... Bad the, decision on their part, then. Um, it, it really... We kind of encouraged them to make that decision. I thought there was very... I thought it was primarily muck there. In River yeah, Valley... I remember talking about it. River Valley, you don't typically get the ledge uh, Exposed ledge like that. You and get, we didn't. We didn't do any borings. Right. And we didn't right. do borings. We've done borings on other bridges in town. We always come up with boulders, boulders and mud. That's typically what's in all of our riverbeds. Yeah. This particular spot, we hit a lot of hard ledge. <clears throat> they did go to a lot of extra effort to do that. They did it in the time frame that they said they would. The lights, they knew they were going to need that. So I, I'm not too sympathetic there. The rock. I am much more sympathetic. I stood there and watched them try to beat this stuff up. And uh, they didn't use dynamite. They didn't use uh, uh, you know, explosives. They just uh, beat it to death. Uh, the the bridge. If, if they'd like the bridge back, I think we ought to give it back. To, <laughs> we might rent from time to time. Uh, they'll probably end up using it uh, because it'll be their own bridge down on Flat Rock Road, just to get back and forth across the, yeah, the brook easier. Easy. I mean, the, uh, um, the general public shouldn't need to use it, but um, their own uh, workmen might. It would be my opinion that, that the additional pumps and equipment necessary uh, because of the, the water is entirely our delay in the situation, and we should be uh, responsible for that figure. Because that was, they had anticipated doing it in August, September, and they didn't get to it till November. Uh, so, I mean, I think that that part of it, or a significant part of that, and certainly half the ledge figure, or some, some amount of the ledge figure, I don't know about the whole amount, they would anticipate running into some amount of it and some uh, amount of excavation of it, but not, as, not nearly as much as. I mean, they went down three feet, I think. And well, three feet more than they typically would have if they had known it was rock. Right, because they had to put down those uh, cutoff walls. The cutoff walls, right, which wasn't necessary. Well, Gordon and I did meet with Kyle. We went over the overall cost over it. They, uh, they would just like us to get off dead center and tell them what we were willing to do. I think they're they're willing to accept whatever the, the Board of Selectmen decide to do, but they just like to, to know what's going to happen. How much do we have in the phone? $10,859. It's my phone even if, I mean, it's, it came out well, which is, partially, it was partially skill, partially luck. Um, it's still, even if we gave him $10,000, I think it's still, Probably the best quality bridge uh, for 100, what is total, 160, I guess, considering what we're doing under that short period of time. Under, as I said, to get flooded out in the middle of the whole project, still open it up. I mean, it was a real emergency situation. I think they 
<coughs> would they responded to him. Would they want the footbridge back? Or would, yes, he says he wanted the footbridge back. Or would, would we want to keep the footbridge for that price? Is that is there any value in us having that? You think for future projects? I mean, I, I the, e each job is somewhat different, and you can't use one bridge to. It certainly has some value to us. It probably has greater value to them uh, since they built it and we're essentially saying we don't really want to pay for it or certainly not uh, what it costs to build. Uh, from their perspective, they would do better to hang on to it. I think it's about $4,000 for the right. bridge. Right. So I think that they'd rather keep the bridge. It's worth more to them than it is to us uh, since they're willing to settle for what we offer them. They can hang onto the bridge. It's that much more. I mean, to why I'm thinking then? Okay, then they take the bridge back. There's the 4,200, whatever the figure is. To forget the lights because they were going to use lights anyway. Right. I agree right. with you there. Yeah. And between the other two figures, um, uh, they use up most of the money. I mean, I think it should even be uh, even 10, 10, 5. I don't have a problem with that at all. <clears throat> it's the best deal the town's had in a long time. It did turn out pretty well. Uh, Next to our pickup truck. That was a good yeah. deal too. <laughs> <laughs> this is the big one. We were running neck and neck for 2017. Right. Although that was 2016 with the bridge shop. So this is a bigger deal. Different year. <laughs> this is a bigger item. So is that a motion then? Sure. 10,500. I'll make a motion to uh, that we uh, pay Town and Rel an additional $10,500 as uh, described in their invoice. Um, as a, I'd suggest you just word as a lump sum payment for extra work. A lump sum, okay. Well, a lump sum payment for extra work. So lump there's, there's sum payment no, for no extra work. No coming back for any more. It's just, this is it. Final lump sum. And, then, and return the bridge. Yep. You're welcome to get the bridge. <coughs> and put it in place in Flat Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> we won't charge them for storage until they need it in Flat Rocks. No so nice. second. Okay, any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Then moving downstream to Smith Place, Rob, you had some thoughts on that? You know, I, uh, I did contact the DOT. First off, I uh, got a, uh, asked Joyce to make me a copy of the um, bridge inspection report for bridge uh, 5187 in the state's inventory, which is Smith Place over Mill Brook. It's a very in-depth uh, report. It's uh, 40, 42 pages. And uh, we are in danger of having uh, potholes that go all the way through the bridge. What's happening uh, on the bridge is that uh, it has an asphalt wearing surface. and. Uh, Salty water for years have gotten into these potholes and worked down. And the bridge deck itself is nothing but a corrugated steel plate on top of steel beams. The steel plate has rusted through. So that, uh, you actually have water leaking through the asphalt and dripping down into the river. Uh, I saw Jim Vanicky a while back and gave him a suggestion that when the time comes, there's a quick easy fix uh, for a very temporary fix. And so I gave him some thoughts on that. Uh, but it's going to happen pretty soon where somebody's wheel is going to go into a hole in the bridge. It doesn't mean the bridge is going to fall down. It means that the, uh, the wearing surface of the bridge is deteriorating and going through the hole by having a black hole up there, I guess. A uh, hole in the black top. Uh, so, the steel is deteriorating, uh, but relatively slowly by comparison to the steel plate. When I say the steel, I talk about the, the structural steel frame is not in danger of failure. It is such a lightly used bridge. It, uh, it has a, an ADP, average daily traffic count of somewhere around 30 vehicles. That's people going back and forth, in and out and so forth. That's extremely low uh, volume of traffic, and most of the traffic is light trucks and passenger vehicles. So the loading on the bridge is very light. 
but uh, what is going to happen first is a, a punch through the deck will happen in the near future. Uh, what I suggest we start doing now, because it's going to take a while, is uh, have an engineer make a determination as to if we can replace just the superstructure. If we take the structural steel and the deck and lift it right out and have a precast unit ready to put into place, we leave the substructure just the way it is. It would be very difficult to work in the river, and approvals would be difficult to get to work in the river. So if we just repoint some of the stonework there, and that's all outlined in the, in the state's inspection report, uh, and uh, replace the, the bearing area for the new structure to sit on. The new structure will be, uh, I suggest, it be uh, concrete and precast. Uh, it does not have to be something made up like uh, Contact does. It's not that sophisticated. This is something that um, down on Lower River Road, they built a form and poured concrete in it. They could do that in a yard, bring it to Smith Place and put it in place the same day that they take out the existing structure. <clears throat> one one piece, or would it be several pieces to well, piece of weight? Well, probably two pieces. Uh, if we want it, and this is what uh, I'd like somebody like Lennard or some engineering firm to make the determination, that uh, um, C.W. Blakeson makes pre-stressed panels that are eight foot wide. This bridge happens to be 16 feet wide. So two panels that are pre-built and they're very inex I mean, relatively inexpensive. They're about $20,000 each panel. They take one panel and put it in place, put the other panel in place, and they're like a double T. If you go into a parking garage, that's primarily what they build them for, is parking garages. So you put in a uh, pre-stressed concrete, a pre-stressed pre-cast uh, concrete panel. Or what would probably be even more economical is to have somebody uh, build a form in their yard, whether it be 16 feet wide by about 23 feet long, which is the size of the top of the structure, and uh, put that in place or have it in two parts, uh, each one approximately eight foot wide, but each, each piece would be uh, 20 feet, 20, 23 feet long, somewhere in that range. So I think it could be done in a a manner where you could remove the existing structure and replace the uh, structure with a pre-built structure, superstructure, not the substructure at all. So you wouldn't be, there would be no excavating, there'd be no um, work in the river itself. Wasn't there concern on that bridge where it's located because it's the corner? Of the force of the water coming down and hitting one of the walls. And then Actually, it's not. The corner is under Route uh, 128. The that particular alignment, uh, you can see. So where it actually the, goes under the bridge, which or under the it's a straight, Smith Place, was a straight shot, and it's further down. Right. Where the then, issue then was. it turns, and the street yeah, has built was an issue big scour walls under 128 yes. in order to keep the. We do have very minor scour. But we're, we're talking a few rocks worth. Okay. How about the load bearing platforms? Uh, the, abutments, the stems of the abutments themselves, they look to be in relatively good condition. When you conditions. take this structure off, you're going to, the areas where they're going to sit. Yeah, that has to be rebuilt. But that's, that's a relatively shallow concrete. Um, and up out of the water. Right, right. So that, that's only about 18 inches by maybe 30 inches of concrete. So what we would, what you're talking about then is doing some preliminary engineering work? Right. So, because um, we would then, in order to do this, we'd have to then have real engineering work. I mean, we'd have to do more thorough engineering work where we go design well, you design build? Yes, that, that's what I'm kind of thinking of. Um, I would like, what I guess I've got in mind is that uh, 
the uh, uh, Northwest Council of Governments has right. uh, made some engineering funds available to each of the towns. If um, we were to uh, contact an engineer and get the concept that I just kind of explained uh, put in a formal package that we could go to uh, a contractor with an engineering firm attached to it, much like um, Mohawk Northeast. Uh, they were the ones that were going to actually precast the uh, Lower River Road bridge in their yard and bring it out and put it in place. Um, that's why I have in the back of my mind is something like that. Okay. <coughs> How available is the well, well, yeah, they have what they did, I guess, in a grant somewhere to um, hire a some cooperative engineering program. So the three engineers to choose from are Lennard, WMC, who's doing the septic study, and also doing the bridge down in Kent, and Cardinal, who's doing flat rocks. So they're all people we use, they're all good. Um, probably most familiar with Lennard. And um, we can find out from Rick Lynn what the availability is of those people and what the, and call up Batista and see if, what he would do for their allotted free money. I think it's like a thousand dollars per town. It's not a huge amount, but mm -hmm. you think that'd be enough to do this or do you need more? Enough to do a preliminary study, I think, right. Right, as far as the, the concept. What I'd like to do is then put the engineering, the design of the um, uh, work to be done into the contract for the replacement. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, whether they use uh, precast items like uh, C.W. Blakesley uh, makes or they do it themselves. They could make that determination, and uh, they would uh, submit their proposal to the town. But we would have to have our own engineer to make sure their engineer is right. on track. But again, it would be just more or less a review of the review. design. Okay. We're not getting into any uh, substructure. We're not getting into any soils. Uh, there is a a large void there in the uh, in the state's opinion. I I think it's what's called a stone clapper, and it's been there. For as long as the wall has been there. When they rebuilt the uh, West Cornwall after 1955, uh, they put in a 48 inch pipe which comes out right. directly under one of the uh, abutments. And just downstream of that is uh, this large void that the state is concerned about. I don't think it's a big concern. I think it's a stone clapper, which is a, a big flat stone supported by other stones, and that's how they built drainage structures many years ago. But we could easily have that filled in just by repointing and, you know, it's a lot of handwork, but uh, not a lot of handwork. It's significant handwork, but uh, it would not mm -hmm. be difficult. So you're talking about uh, making a, contracting a, an engineer either through COG, right. or, uh, through their arrangements, possibly supplemental needs from the town of some sort possibly, mm -hmm. uh, to come up with enough of a plan to... A proposal so that a uh, design-build contract could be let down. Right. Okay, so I'll make a motion to authorize Roger to contact the COG and get some preliminary, that's hopefully Rick free, that's Rick Lynn, yeah. uh, engineering work on Smith's Place. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Time frame? Um, distant future at this point. Uh, it probably would not be next year at the earliest to do anything uh, as far as construction goes. As far as if we could get a proposal together, put that out, uh, a design build um, engineering construction company would probably want the winter to uh, come up with a proposal. There is both state and federal money available for this this particular bridge, and it's listed by bridges. I think we ought to skip over that on this one. Uh, I'm hoping that this is not a, a terribly expensive bridge because we're not getting into the ground. And the problem is what we're going to do is we're going to replace the bridge with what we have out there. Again, it's a single lane, single span. It serves about six or eight houses on a dead-end road. Uh, 
the state and federal government is going to want us to meet their current standards, which is a much wider bridge. It means we'd have to get it. It'd be, it would be ridiculously expensive to do what the federal government would require. So I think along those same lines, it might be interesting to look into Lake Road, which would be much easier to meet their requirements and state and federal money is available for that. So getting even further down the road. Well, it's not actually that far down the road. Because uh, I did talk to Mike Brzezinski of HVA, and he wants to meet with us uh, the 15th of May to sort of pick a project out of his. Did you look at his book? Yes, I did look at it, and they're primarily culverts. There are a lot of right. good items to pick from. Um, FYI, I will not be around between uh, May 10th and May 18th. Okay. Uh, I think we can carry on without you. But <laughs> what are you saying is that there there are monies out there also from fish and wildlife sources to make for better wildlife habitat corridors. They're primarily looking at Furnace Brook and Hollenbeck as being their top choices. So I said out of that group, as far as stuff we're actually thinking of doing, that one on Lake Road might be a good candidate. Um, and I don't know what this means other than there has to be some research done and he's, they've done it from the wildlife mm -hmm. standpoint and the flooding standpoint, um, which is different than what we normally consider, but that work has been done in that report. And the next thing to do is pick a priority project and then see if there's money out there for it. So, and again, it's a long ways off, but would you concur that would be the most likely thing we've got that fits, you know, there's, there's no point in the one on the other bridge on the Holland Beck doesn't seem like it's um, needs replacement and... Well, I think the Holland Beck, um, I'd like to talk to Rick Lynn about if I can, I'll make an appointment to go talk to him right. about uh, Smith Place and um, the funds available in that respect. But while I'm there, if I can uh, kind of talk to him about uh, what funds would be available for uh, Lake Road over the Hollenbeck. That, uh, that would be a much easier uh, bridge that in order to meet both the state and federal requirements, because that's going to be a complete and total replacement. The Smith Place is not a, a replacement, it's just a repair. So it would be a good thing to talk to him, and I can bring back what, what I learned from that to, to the board. Okay. What date do you win? Uh, the 10th, the 18th. All right, so you won't be in our next meeting, but maybe you could talk to him before the 10th and mm -hmm. I could let the board know and then carry that forward to the meeting with each VA in June on the 15th. Okay. Remember, one of the things that came up on Lake Road was the thought of sleeving the one that was there and then putting in a whole separate one. Second one? Uh, it, it, that's a possibility. It, it's certainly not to be disregarded. I don't think it's going to work. Uh, I think that uh, once a study is done on the, uh, the watershed, that that existing culvert is going to be so undersized uh, that uh, and in such poor condition, the bottom is, is shot. I've walked through that pipe in, in dry weather, and there are holes in the bottom of that pipe, probably four inches in diameter. But that's what I'm saying, if you re it with that... It, you're going to reduce the capacity. Anytime you put a, a sleeve in something... I understand, I understand, I understand. If you and re you to, it, and then, then you build the second one next to it, have an additional one. It's a possibility. I, uh, it's, it's not standard it, engineering, but it's it, okay. It's the type of thing where you need a hydrology study first. Uh, Which they need to do anyway. Right, which you're going to have to do in order to do anything. Then the alternatives uh, and a, a series of pipes, the trouble with the series of pipes 
is they're easy to plug, which is one of the reasons why I like these arches or an open structure is much more difficult uh, to plug up a, a large area. And you still need the same amount of capacity. Whether you put in three pipes or four pipes, right, right, right. each one of them is a single barrel. And whether we're talking about plugging it with a flood or plugging it by animals. With, with animals, or even if you have a, a, a storm and a, a tree washes down stream. That's what I, yes, I meant, a flood of some right. kind of a heavy, heavy rain. It doesn't make any difference who plugs it, but right. if it gets plugged, you've got a problem. It is interesting though, the one is the bridge that they did on Route 43, also on the Hollenbeck. Mm -hmm. There's a nice picture of it in the study yes, that's showing, right. <laughs> showing the bridge is almost underwater in right. dry weather. Yeah. So, how did that happen? How did the state build a bridge for lots of money that looks like that is even more prone to flooding than our pipe? I can explain it to you. And it all yeah, has the sign that said it's prone to flooding. Right. It, it <laughs> has to do with the downstream property owner. It, that's considered a water course, which naturally the Hollenbeck River. And each uh, owner of property on a water course is responsible for providing adequate capacity for the water to go through their property. Now every town, road or state road, right, that is an obstruction on the water course. So that uh, a hydrologist would look at it that uh, we might need, I'm, I'm going to be ridiculous, we might need a 40 foot bridge there by their study. And everybody downstream, once you get beyond um, uh, Sedgwick Park, uh, the water course runs much quicker. There's much greater grade. So what's happening is the upstream area, it's very, very flat. The beaver have done a lot of that. So you see the, the freeboard on that bridge on 43 that they just built, I think it's 10 inches. Right. Uh, but once the, weather. Right, well, once the water course were cleared to what uh, nature would like there, and nature would do that in a flood, wash out the road and if you don't repair it, nature will take care of it its own way. But we want to keep the road at a certain grade and conduct the water through it. So I think that the uh, elevation of the bottom of the pipe that's there now has to go down quite a bit in order to let the water drain through that area. And then the, the bridge on Route 43, instead of having 10 inches of freeboard, might have three foot of three bo freeboard and allow a great deal of water through it. Right now, the the problem is the downstream swamp is backing up all the water under the, under the river. Okay, all right. We've learned a lot on bridges tonight. <laughs> Good. Anything else on bridge program? Thank you, Roger. No, I take care of my, my notes. Good. All right, that's, that's good. All right, so next thing is our beach director. Job description, we've got a job description. Okay, it's good. Somebody worked this yeah. over. Do you know HVA, Town Bridge Program, HVA? Yeah, that's, that's what I said was we're meeting, I'm meeting with HVA. Oh, they were just with, meeting that. Oh, okay. With that, and we're going to go over the study and try to highlight oh, okay. the whole thing. In my mind, that this Lake Road culvert might be the best candidate. And he's a saddle like that, too. So if there's big wildlife money out there, then they will get a big... It works for everyone. Right. Okay. Thank okay. Um, beach director, I think the job is ready to go. Anybody have any comments on that? Well, like I said, somebody worked this over very nicely. That's right. Thank you, Joyce. Sure we did. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did, but somebody then you know, put this all into coordinated fashion. Right. Good. So we're set on that. Our next thing is we have a couple candidates uh, who are available to come in on Thursday night, 7.30, 8 o'clock. They're not available any earlier. Uh, I got another meeting until 7.30. I'm, I'm, I'm unavailable. Oh, okay. um, are, they, are they scheduled at this point or do we have to contact them to schedule? I think we're we're, scheduled. they're scheduled. Do we're we have scheduled. an 8.30 person too or we haven't heard? I haven't heard. It's not on. So there's a third person in it. Possible at a third, but not possible at That would be at 830. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that would be good to get that. And that's here. That is here. Okay, that sound right? No, that sounds good. Okay, because we, we got a couple good candidates. So. You know, this is mm -hmm. something that the individual has to be 
and we have to decide and have to be hired. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we'll work on that and we'll post that meeting. Okay, so next thing we had the, you've been, I've been sending you emails on updates to the state budget. Uh, we got a surprise since our last meeting with bills coming out of the Appropriations Committee that would have, uh, would not have done the state, the state pension for teachers, but it would have taken away the town aid road grant in exchange increase the sales tax and the towns would get a percentage of the increase in the sales tax would then would offset some of the loss of the state road money. But the appropriation committee didn't have enough votes to pass that idea, so they have not passed a budget. The finance committee has not met, I believe, because the appropriation hasn't passed a budget and everybody's meeting with the governor these last couple of days to try to see where they're at. Meanwhile, the, the uh, revenue projections were overly optimistic and the, uh, the deficit has grown substantially since they last estimated. So, uh, so I'm meeting with uh, John Laporta, John Green to talk about that uh, next Monday, board finances meeting next Wednesday to finalize their budget. Next Thursday, I'm going to Hartford with a lot of other selectmen to get an update. And we have a town meeting scheduled for the 19th. So the, quest, the big question, I mean, we had a good budget hearing. Um, the expenditure side seems pretty tight. Um, pretty minimal increase in spending. The question is, what are, what are we doing with the revenues? That's what we'll be working on. And uh, we're on track to go on the 19th. So let's see, then... Um, I would doubt the state will have decided a budget. No. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think, I don't think June's going to be... I mean, the reality, too, is that everybody in the state is relying on this, uh, labor savings, and those negotiations haven't, haven't really even started yet. So. I mean, that's going to be months be probably before they include that piece of it. And without that piece, they really can't set a budget. Um, it's starting to lay off people. Yeah, the layoff uh, numbers. Yeah. So let's see. Here's our additions to the agenda. Uh, senior van. Um, I'm talking to. Uh, okay. Yep. Good yep. Good night. Thank you. Um, talking to Bob Valentine, uh, he is proposing to t uh, take the uh, senior van and run it out of Goshen Town Hall as opposed to the transit district. He feels that will be easier to hire people through his office and with them dispatching it and making the appointments that will make the van more available. The transit was pretty constrained Monday to Friday, 3 to, no, 9 to 3. Yeah, but he's still going to be constrained in his time frame too, right? He's initially constrained, but he is, has, he's, he's got some weekend The constraint ability. was, I think, it appeared that Bob's constraint, or our constraint, was more based on driver constraint as opposed to how uh, the transit authority works. Right, yeah, they were. Well, he says, it looks like at this point I can only have the bus available Thursday, Friday, and Saturday all day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 8.45 to 2.15. No, but that's based on... I mean, on the time is still pretty good. That's based on drivers, though. On those that's drivers. Right. And he's got he somebody has. else that's right. waiting, that's waiting that's to get That's what he's hoping for, yeah. So. But I think the transit authority was more constrictive in terms of their time. Yeah, they only wanted to hire one driver. Right. right. Didn't seem to quite make sense. No, it didn't. Right. They were saying. It's like they didn't understand what we were going to need with this van when it was yeah. first proposed. But here's another question that I had on his email. 
So there is a grant that must come from the state to the right. town of Goshen and the town of Cornwall. Right. Cornwall has seventeen thousand six hundred and thirty-six dollars that goes to Gear. Right. So they Gear already gets seventeen six from our which our would state be grant. revenue from our well, grant plus we give, gave them another five. Uh, no, the grant the grant can only go to somebody with a bus. So we cannot, we couldn't take it, and use it we, we can't it. use it to like, as a general revenue source. It has to go to somehow to a transportation program. But now, we can't a, use it to RVN either? I think what he's talking about doing is reallocating the funds so that more of it will go to our van. But at this point we're not going to even, our share probably won't even meet the whatever mm -hmm. residual of 5,000 this year as far as the hours and stuff that we've done for trips. So we'll probably do a bigger part of that next year. But in our budget, when we were talking about giving to other organizations, and there was a big right. discussion about the extra $2,000 to gear to make it a $5,000 thing, we actually already given them seventeen six. Well, So they're getting twenty one something from the town for, for actually, the service that they're providing. Actually, uh, the, the, the seventeen to be fair, is coming from the state. It's not coming from the taxpayers. We're just saying, Gear is the most used thing so that we have, so time. that we could. Okay. So whatever, that is a good point, though. I'm I just didn't understand yeah. it when he one, wrote it because it's in this little front yeah. season. I'm like, what? What do you mean, seventeen? The one thing I, mean, I would agree with what you're saying in that. Um, I also agree with how you're saying it. That in the discussion with Gear, this past budget time frame, that seventeen thousand dollars grant never was, was mentioned. not mentioned. Right. Yeah, but but it can't go. It has to go to somewhere Somebody. that's uh, qualified for it. Apparently. How come Goshen doesn't have to like give it to Northwest Transit? They get the whole, what are they at twenty four thousand. I th think that's because they're taking because they're in kind. His administ I mean, he's administering the program. They're housing it. They're maintaining the thing. So their expense for running the grant is bigger than what ours is at the current time. But they get a, they're getting the grant for thirty two seven. Yeah. So why don't they have to earmark it to a service that also runs through their town? Like Northwest Transit runs through their town. So why didn't they have to? I think funnel they, it like we have to funnel it to here. I think they previously did funnel a lot of it, and then we had we reallocated it last year based on our estimate of what. The, the van program was going to be. I think previous to that, they probably gave it all to Northwest. Okay. Okay. So anyway, <coughs> still available. New telephone number. New magnets coming up. So we'll. Oh, it'll be up. Yeah. It'll be so here's a new telephone number, which we can put out there on YouTube. Big letters. Uh, this is the new number starting probably. Uh, well, starting now is. 860-294-7878. And will uh, the Northwest District uh, uh, hopefully will flip the thing below? Well, hopefully we'll have that <laughs> number to <laughs> tell people. Well, that was probably just their general number that went into their driver right. ride service, right? So. Right, but if somebody calls that and they say, no, 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 we want to go to the whole van, it'll be nice enough to yeah. give them this number. Please hold it. Two nine right. four, huh? Two. Okay, so that's up there on the van. Uh, we did receive a petition uh, from the Cornwall Village Improvement Society the 27th of last month. Uh, asking the town to have a uh, speedy cleanup of the remaining gravel and dirt from last year's resurfacing program and not employ the same road resurfacing products and processes this year. So, uh, the area in town that was done was right here in the village. Were all the streets? Right. Pine, yeah. Bolton. Uh, jewel, right? School, which could yeah. have been paved. I don't know if that was really. Yeah, that was that was done too. And it appears that this uh, is more of a concern from the cleanup from that event than it was from any winter activity. Well, or is that that's kind of a 
think the concern is there's dust. It was dust. There is dust. And the problem is with doing the summer uh, past oil application, you didn't, we did it in August. Jim said it didn't push in as much as it will this summer of the second year. So you have some of the gravel sticking up which traps. It's not so much the gravel, it's the gravel was wet, but it does trap all the sand in there. And it, what, even when you sweep it, there's still sand and particles in, in the gravel. So it does make a cloud. It's been a dry six months, so we haven't had like the wash, we may usually wash the stuff. So there is a dust thing, but also when, as soon as I received this, the sweeper went by, so the roads have been swept. So I think, I'm pretty confident that there's not, I mean, I haven't even looked. Did they sweep all of it? Did they do Jewel Street? Yeah. Have you driven down there? Yeah. It doesn't look like they did very much. Well, they went over it, and again, if it's trapped in there, oh, you, you get to look the at the sides of the roads, it looks like they didn't do a thing. Uh huh. Well, in some places, too, people put more stuff back out into the roads. Maybe that's it, but didn't look like they did anything today when I was down there. Huh. I just so, found this petition very interesting because two years ago we had the concerns from the people in West Cornwall about the chip seal getting yeah. stuck to shoes and cars and that, and then we did the same thing here. And we're getting sort of the same complaints. I've had people complain about the stuff being stuck on their feet and on the dog's paws and stuff when they walk. So. Oh. Well, I don't know if it's, you know, what's... This is sort of a new thing for us, right? We used to sand mm -hmm. our oil and sand. Right. Now we're doing this chip seal. Do we have the right company? Oh, yeah, it's just different products. We have the right product. <laughs> Which one do we do? Do we do the MC three thousand here, or do we do the uh, oh, that's what well, the results? Uh, right. So this this was this was this was pass oil, which sets up tighter. Supposedly, it's not as porous. This one. This was the pass oil, which you can put on in the summertime. It's more expensive. It sets up locks up harder. And I don't know, remember it's supposedly being the yeah. better option. Well, yeah, it's tighter. It's not as fluid. The MC3000 is the older oil, you put it on in the spring, and it flows more, it's gooier, so it seals the cracks better. It also does track. So the thought was, you put this on, where there's more walking, you're better off. But so probably, this is different than what was done in West Cornwall? Correct. Okay. And I haven't seen the, the ooze be the problem as much as the dust. Yeah. And part of it, as I said, was, and I don't even think it's as much the gravel yeah, as it is the sand, because if you have fresh stone, a little uneven, it will trap the fines in right? it. Right? Yeah. sand from the, from, the, from, the, from, the, from the winter snow. So I did, even before we got the petition, I did talk to Jim. And because this is fairly small miles and there's no hills, an easy fix of that problem is just to use more magic salt in here, not have a lot of sand because we don't have the hills. So that seemed like that would help the issue. And then also this isn't done only done every five years or more, so it's not right. really, I think people thought it would go every year. How was the dust um, the sweeping was being last? Oh, it was raining, so it wasn't yeah. super dusty. Yeah. And we really haven't had a real wash, which does help with, yeah, no. with the stuff. So we may get the Thursday, wash. Maybe. Thursday, Friday, maybe. There. You do need to check out Jewel Street, though, because it's more than people raking it back into the road. Mm. It's, it was noticeable extra stuff. Yeah, it should have been swept a little better. Hmm. And dried the whole village to see what everything looked like. I mean, Bowen Hill looked okay. Right, so I mean, Pine Street. This looks Pine cool. Street looks okay. But Jewel, when I turned down Jewel Street, I said, oh, did they even do right. this street? Right, right. Okay, hmm. exactly. There's actual, okay, thanks. on the side of the road, both sides, sink. <laughs> okay. And at the intersections, a lot more than they should be. Yeah or a lot more than there has been in the past. And this is a different company that we're using to sweep this year, right? No, we swept this all ourselves. We did? Yeah. Well, did we, are we going to hire Seymour to sweep some? Well, they're going to do, the, they're going to do their Cornwall Bridge stuff. And if we That's did the cog cool. sweeper on most of the town, yeah. so if we, we did Cornwall Bridge, because that's been oil, and we'll use Seymour to sweep right. that up. 
I mean, I assume we have to do some other sweeping too. No. I think we left that as an option too. If we need it, we can mm -hmm. use their people. And we can go around it again. So, so we have those three things, which I think will help solve the problem. I think it's important for people to realize that just as with snow plowing, everybody goes, you know, where's the plow? How come my road hasn't been plowed? Or it's been four hours since the road, the plow went by, um, or eight hours, whatever the time frame you want to choose. There's, it takes time. There's sort of that aspect. It's not, uh, you know, roads are, there's blacktop, oil, sand. It's, it's, you know, it's not a perfect, uh, I mean, we can attempt to alleviate it by doing different kinds of things, but I think the nature of the beast is there's going to be some sand. There's going to be some dust. I don't think there's any way around it. Right. We can, Jim also said there's, there's different stone we can use with our chip seals. A crushed rock, pea stone. I'm not sure we get pea stone, but apparently there's different quarries, different properties. So we can do all that too. Um, but we're restricted by the state on what we can do when we can do it. And it seemed like the the emulsions on the sand seal just didn't, they were just like black paint, it didn't really accomplish much. So, but I think this, it's already better than it was when this was written, and I think it will continue to improve. And, and it's significantly better than it was a couple years back, four or five years back, we were using a sand, right. oil and sand, and that was just dusty for yeah. days and weeks after it was applied. Right. Um, I think this is mostly winter sand is what you're seeing here. More than I'm just saying that if you live near a road and traffic goes by at 25, 35 miles an hour, there's going to be some amount of dust that happens. I'm sure you're, you're on a dirt road. No, oh, there's tons of dust. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Okay, so I'll write them back and say, well, we're glad to talk to you to them any time, but mention these three things that should help. Yeah, but I think especially if they use magics. I mean, you don't have dust on the state road because they're using salts, but right. that's not what destroys with that. the road. Yeah. I would not agree oh, with that. Oh, they got, okay, you got dust on the state road. Phenomenal the amount of dust. Oh, Phenomenal. Oh, no, it's probably just like the salt. Just, there's just dust. dust. Yeah. There's, there's cars yes. that dust. Yeah, the salt can make a dust too, I've seen yeah. that. You know, there's, okay. there's a tremendous yeah, white dust instead of brown dust. <laughs> Go over here. Mm, okay. All right. So anyway, um, that is uh, the petition of the day. And uh, next we have tax refund. Um, So I'd make, actually the total is $164.74, so I would make a motion to grant these two tax refunds as recommended by the tax collector. Where was from? Motor vehicle. Oh, using your... Okay, I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next is it's our annual Marie Bond Music Scholarship Award Night. And we have two applications, Joyce? Uh, yes. Right. Both named Jacob. And you can read them, I have. They have copies too. Oh, they do have copies. Good. Two qualified applicants, $1,500 scholarship. We can't split it.
to a student, $500 to a student. So I know it says that it has to be to someone that attended Cornwall School for four years. Correct. But one of the applicants does not live in Cornwall. Correct. But he did go to. I just he did go there for, <coughs> yes, I did nine, years. for nine years. All nine years. Yeah. And I also point out that that particular applicant paid, played taps here at Memorial Day for like six years in a row, which I felt was a significant contribution to the Memorial Day program. So funny because they're both going to the same college. Yeah. They both have almost the same name. Yeah, <laughs> they're, this one they they're both almost doing the same major. <laughs> yeah, it's not an easy choice. It'd be nice to have more. Yeah. Okay. Neither one is sure if they're going to have time to keep playing. <laughs> Need a motion or are we well, what, I, what I'd like to do is, because I think we have two qualified candidates here, just we'll each have a paper ballot, and That's what we as there's three of us, it shouldn't be a tie. <laughs> 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 there is one. We'll have to call the register of voters if that's what's going on around here. So, vote for only one candidate. I like the last name. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. It keeps where the votes. We vote for spare. Okay. You want to make a motion to award it? So. So I'll make a motion to award the Marie Baum Scholarship to Jacob Spur. Is there a second? Oh, second. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 We were I know. We voted already, didn't we? That's right. <laughs> okay, so I think that's <coughs> all our added items. Except for, no, we did. Ian Ingersoll came in with a envelope with $2,100 of donations to help pay for the septic study, um, half from private citizens and businesses, and half from the Coral Conservation Trust. This will offset the amount the town has to pay for the study. COG is Charging about a thousand dollars to administer the grant. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. So this is okay. earmarked specifically yes. for the sewer. So this is Good. a donation to the capital projects fund, so people will be able to get a tax deduction for their contribution, okay. and it enables us to complete the study as budgeted. So I will also write letters thanking people for their donation. Okay, so anyway, that's good. Yeah. And now we're on to public comments again. Yeah,
Uh, well, that's going to be the next session. Oh, it is. Yeah. Gordon, I was wondering, with the 4% decrease in the grand list, uh, how would one find out uh, what the decreases came from? Uh, I was told that it, it came from items being removed. So was that property that was came there, off? You, was well, yeah, there was two. There were two. There was one, a couple major ones that were taken off. The biggest one being Trinity Camp. The conservation trust purchases that removed some off that list, but overall. The biggest decrease was spread out throughout all the properties in town. It wasn't just land coming off the tax rolls. It was just generally a general reassessment. Uh, re, it was a revaluation year, so it was basically every the average property that doesn't exist went down four percent or three and a half percent or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. The amount that was actually taken off the tax rolls was relatively minor. That was all under 490 anyway, but you know, actually, no, what was the peculiarity of that was that when Trinity was for sale and it was inactive, it went back on the tax, tax roll. Now that they are back in as a nonprofit, it is exempt again, but they are going to pay the town $20,000 in lieu of taxes the way they did before. So it was assessed at I think we got forty thousand when it was taxable. Now we get a net twenty, or we if we lost twenty thousand dollars, but they they aren't actually obligated to pay us anything if they don't have to, if they don't want to. So that's 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 the impact of that. I think the nature of revaluation, by its definition, is that <clears throat> the grand list can go up or go down, and it went down a little bit. And well, four percent is well. It, it went it went down a, a two two or some. I'm not sure what the exact numbers are. It went down a, a significant amount, a couple Three points. Three point nine percent is that. But profit. the two factors are revaluation and Trinity being removed to a nonprofit or, or an exempt status uh, again. Is there a list can that's available to to review? I I would ask the assessor's office. I would think every I think all everybody's new values are all um, they're available. What people's assessments are, whether there's a work list of who actually went down and how do you total all that up? I'm not sure the answer to that, but I'm sure Joanne. I think that's called the grand list. It's a grand list, but I'm not sure it shows the net. You know, it doesn't say here's the top ten decreases or whatever. But I'm sure Joanne will spend time with you over there to do that. Um, as far as what, what went down, some <coughs> some properties went up. Yes, I know. Mine went up fifty-eight thousand. Yeah. Turn it around. Mm -hmm. With no work yeah. done. So. Well, so that's that's the reappraisal process. Any other public comments? Can I get an update on the um, garden boxes behind the library? Did you I talk to Jim? Did he think that's I, something he could do? I think they've already been moved. Oh, good. Pretty sure. Yep, they emptied them out and moved them empty. Did they get volunteers or the town crew did it? The town crew did it. Oh, yes. So I think they're at the school. Any other public comments? If you could just tell Jim that there's a big sinkhole on Flat Rocks. A big sinkhole. <laughs> Just above Crooked S's Road, there's a house there, and it's right after his driveway. The pipe uh, has a hole in it, so it's all the road. Huh. Somebody's okay. going to fall in there. <laughs> there we go. Got it. Okay. So then we are on to bill payment executive session. I'll make a motion to go into executive session and talk about delinquent taxes. Okay. You also said you were going to discuss the bend. I will talk about the bend, yeah. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Following delivery taxes, we'll chat about the bend update. 